What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to solve absolute value equations, all right? So whenever you solve these types of equations, you're basically gonna come up with two equations or two different answers, all right? Why is that? Well, if you think of just, let's start with a kind of an easier uh, problem right here. So the absolute value of x is equal to five, okay? So x here could be either positive or negative five, okay? So x, our answer would be x is equal to positive or negative five. Or another way we could write this is x is equal to positive five and x is equal to negative five, okay? Both of these are true statements, right? Because if we plug in a, a positive five right here, well, the absolute value of positive five is indeed five, right? And the absolute value of negative five, right? The absolute value of negative five is also equal to five, right? So again, these are both true answers, true statements. So whenever you're trying to set up an equation, it's going to be the exact same process. You're going to have two, you're going to split it up into two different equations. One's going to be positive and one's going to be negative, right? So I'm going to do a couple easier-ish examples and then we're going to get into some more complicated ones. All right, bro, or bro Safina, let's solve this. So here we have the absolute value of x minus four is equal to six, right? But again, we're gonna split this up into two different equations, all right? So we're gonna have the absolute value of x minus four is equal to positive or negative six, all right? So we could write that as positive or negative six, or we could simply just split it up into two equations. So we could say the absolute value of x minus four is equal to positive six, or the absolute value of x minus four is equal to negative six. Okay, so now we can basically just drop the absolute value signs and solve this like normal. So we're gonna have x minus four is equal to six and x minus four is equal to negative six. All right, so on this side, uh, we're trying to isolate x, right? So we're gonna add four to both sides. Okay, so that means these cancel out. So then we're just left with x is equal to six plus four, which is equal to 10. Okay, and then on this side, again, uh, isolating the x, get rid of this negative four by adding four to both sides. So then these cancel out and we're left with x is equal to negative six plus four, which is equal to negative two, okay? So here are our two answers, 10 and negative two, right? Now, if you wanna check your answer, you just have to plug these two numbers back into the very original equation up here, okay? So let's do that real quick. So we're gonna plug in a 10 for x right here. So we're gonna have the absolute value of 10 minus four is equal to six. And then on this side, we're gonna have the absolute value of negative two, right? Plug it in for x. Negative two minus four is equal to positive six, okay? So uh, first of all, 10 minus four, that's equal to positive six, right? So here we have the absolute value of positive six is equal to six, and this is a true statement. And then on this side, uh, negative two minus four, that's equal to negative six, right? So we have the absolute value of negative six, is equal to six. And this is also a true statement, right? So since both of these are true statements, that means our two answers that we got right here, 10 and negative two, are correct, okay? Not too bad, right? Now let's go to one that's just a little bit harder. So again, we can rewrite this as negative two times the absolute value of x minus four is equal to positive or negative negative six, okay? And I know that sounds confusing, but you just have to keep your signs consistent. Okay, so we're gonna have positive or negative, negative six, right? Negative six. Okay, so if we wanna split this into two equations, we can do that. So we're gonna have negative two times the absolute value of x minus four is equal to, so the first one would be positive times negative six, right? So a positive times a negative is a negative. So here we would have negative six for our first one. And then for our second equation, again, we're gonna have negative two, times the absolute value of x minus four is equal to, and then our second one is negative, negative six. And a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So then here we would have positive six. Okay, now to solve for x right here, uh, one thing I wanna point out is that these absolute value signs, you can actually kind of think of them or treat them like parentheses, okay? So for example, if I did have parentheses here, right, x minus four is equal to negative six, well then you would be able to see like, oh, I can take this negative two and just distribute it to the x and to the negative four, okay? That is definitely one option that you have. 
Another option, and that would work a little bit easier in this case, is just dividing this whole side by negative two, and then remember what you do to one side, you do to the other, right? So that's what we're gonna do here because it'll divide evenly with this negative six. Okay, so let's divide the side by negative two, and again, what you do to one side, you do to the other, right? So then over here, the negative two on top and the bottom cancel out, and then on this side, we're just left with the absolute value of x minus four, right? Or we could just leave it as x minus four. And then that's gonna be equal to negative six divided by negative two, which is equal to positive three, right? And then uh, simply solving for x right here, we're just gonna add four to both sides, okay? Those cancel out. So x is equal to three plus four, which is equal to seven, right? There's one answer. And then over here, again, we can do the same thing. We can divide both sides by negative two. Okay, so again, these cancel out. And then here, we're gonna be left with x minus four is equal to six divided by negative two, which is equal to negative three, right? And then again, we're gonna get rid of this four by adding four to both sides. These cancel out. So then we're just left with x is equal to negative three plus four, which is equal to positive one, right? So here are our two answers x is equal to seven and x is equal to one. And if you wanted to, you could definitely plug these two back into the very original equation and check your answer, but you'll see that they're actually true. All right, let's do uno mas. All right, so here we can see that we have absolute value signs on both sides of this equal sign, right? So again, remember, you're gonna have two equations, right? So what you would do in this case is, again, you could leave this side as is, we can say, two times the absolute value of 4x minus one is equal to positive or negative three times the absolute value of 4x plus two, okay? And since we have absolute value signs on both sides, you could actually switch this too. You could actually leave this side alone, the three times the 4x plus two, and put the positive negative sign on this side, okay? But I think it's just easier to keep it a little more consistent, so we'll just put it on the right side. Okay, so writing it out, our two equations would be two times the absolute value of 4x minus 1 is equal to positive, right, 3 times the absolute value of 4x plus 2. And then our other equation would be 2 times the absolute value of 4x minus 1 is equal to negative, there we go, okay, <laughs> negative 3 times the absolute value of 4x plus 2. Okay, and I'm gonna scoot this one a little bit over so it's not too cluttered. All right, what else can we do here? Well, again, I told you you could kind of think about the absolute value signs like parentheses, right? So in this case, we can actually just distribute stuff into the absolute value signs, right? So you can also rewrite it if you want with parentheses like that, if it makes it a little bit easier to see it. So here, uh, we can distribute this too into these first set of absolute value signs, or parentheses in this case. So first we have two times four x, that's gonna be equal to eight x, and two times negative one is equal to negative two. And then that's gonna be equal to, then do, just distributing again on this side, three times four x, that's equal to 12 x, and three times positive two is positive six. All right, now all we have to do is get all the x's on the same side and the rest of the crap on the other side, right? So in this case, let's move the x's to this side. So here I'm going to subtract 8x and subtract 8x. Okay. So then these cancel out. So we're left with negative two is equal to 12 minus eight is positive four, right? So we're gonna have positive four x right there plus six. Okay, and then let's move this six to the other side. So we're gonna do minus six minus six. So they cancel out on this side. So negative two minus six, that's equal to negative eight. So we get negative eight is equal to four x. And then uh, here, to get rid of the four, we're going to divide both sides by four. Okay, so these cancel out. And then we're just left with x on this side, right? So x is equal to negative eight divided by four, which is equal to negative two. All right, there's one of your answers. And then we can do the same thing over here, okay? Just distribute. So two times four x, again, that's equal to eight x, and two times negative one, or two times minus one is equal to minus two. So then that's equal to, and then here we have a negative three this time, right? So negative three times four x, that's equal to negative 12 x, and negative three uh, times positive two is equal to negative six, right? So minus six. 
Okay, so again, we want to get all the x's to the same side. This time, I'm going to move them to uh, the left side, right? So we're going to add 12x and add 12x. So now on this side, they cancel out. So 8 plus 12 is, is equal to 20x. So 20x minus 2 is equal to negative 6, right? And then just move the 2 over to the other side. So on this side, they cancel out. And we're left with 20 x is equal to negative 6 plus 2 is equal to negative 4. Okay, so then divide both sides by 20 to isolate the x. So then these 20s cancel out. So then we're left with x is equal to negative 4 divided by 20, which is equal to negative 1 fifth. All right, so there's your other answer. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.